What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. A while back I did a scenario with a similar concept, but decided this one kind of needs a remake. Not only did a lot of people request this remake, but I also think it had way more potential than I initially gave it. This what if will be grounded, but I'm going to take liberties to make it work and make it interesting. It's more of an alternate universe fanfiction type story. With that explanation out of the way, let's begin covering what if Saiyans were good. This version of the story is essentially going to be an original one. We're changing such a fundamental aspect of the series that it's going to affect everything else. Our story starts pretty far back, and of course we're going to have to change some things here. For this I took a little bit of inspiration from the story about the Super Saiyan God as well as Dragon Ball Legend, but we're switching things around a bit. So the Saiyans were still a society of warriors, but in this scenario, good Saiyans and evil Saiyans coexisted for far longer. But eventually there's a breaking point. A civil war breaks out between two factions of Saiyans. There's the evil side and the good side. And the good side is led by a guy named Vegeta. King Vegeta I to be specific. It's a brutal battle and a lot of Saiyans end up dying on both sides but the Vegeta side is victorious. The new generations of Saiyans aren't evil brutes. Vegeta has a son, and then his son has a son. And that leads us to where we are now. King Vegeta III is the current ruler, the one that we actually know. His planet is prosperous now. They live under King Cold's thumb, who tried to take over this planet long ago. King Cold knew how useful the Saiyans would be. They're well known as warriors, and they are apparently pretty strong. Not in comparison to him or some of his troops, but still, generally, Saiyans are stronger than others. But more importantly, he knows their history as brutal warriors, although he comes to learn that these Saiyans are not like the ones that he knows from history. Reluctantly, the Saiyans do work under him, because they don't really have a say in it. They don't needlessly kill anymore, so their strength doesn't really have any use to King Cold, at least at first. First, he was content with having another empire under his control, because they still generated money in other ways, and he was able to get resources from them too. But he found other uses for them, manipulating them into wars, staging conflicts, things like that. The Saiyans didn't destroy stuff for the sake of it. Sure, they enjoyed the thrill of battle, but not if it was an unnecessary battle. So, King Cold made the battles necessary, but this slowly starts losing use for him, and it doesn't always work. It's weird, the Saiyans have become completely pacifistic in comparison to their old selves, and whenever King Cold tries to stage something, the leadership of King Vegeta is effective enough to de-escalate things. And King Cold realizes that at some point, they're gonna catch on to him. They probably already have caught on to him and are just doing everything they can to avoid it. He can manipulate the masses, but not forever. And even with the resources and money the Saiyans are getting him in other ways, it's still not useful especially with them maybe being a threat in the future because there's no doubt that the Saiyans eventually do want to rebel. They're just not strong enough at the moment. But what if they did become strong enough? It's not King Cold's problem anymore though. Frieza ends up taking the throne. And his outlook is pretty simple. He thinks it's best to get rid of the Saiyans. He's heard rumors of the Super Saiyan and the Super Saiyan God, but on top of that, the Saiyans have lost most of their use. Besides manual labor, Frieza really has no reason to work with them anymore and their planet isn't really valuable either. To make things worse, one of Frieza's soldiers gets word of a strong Saiyan being born. Maybe in some alternate universe, this kid would have gotten sent away, being feared by King Vegeta. But here, King Vegeta sees an opportunity. The next generation of Saiyans will be incredibly strong. This one, named Broly, he might be a symbol of hope for them, but they need to make sure Frieza doesn't find out about Broly, or anyone like him. So King Vegeta promises Paragus that they'll shield Broly, keeping him secret. His power definitely could be useful. King Vegeta is well aware. King Cold was never a true ally. He was a ruler, an oppressor of the Saiyans. But Frieza is different. He's not the same as Cold. He's worse. Cold was at least content. But Frieza is probably going to be a lot more overt about his hatred for the Saiyans. He definitely doesn't seem content. One of King Vegeta's top soldiers is suspicious. Bardock, a warrior with pretty surprising strength. Amidst a meeting between King Vegeta and his top men, Bardock interjects. The Saiyans have all been trying to figure out what to do, and as much as they do want to fight against this, they realize that it's probably not going to work out. Bardock doesn't like the outcome either. He doesn't want to abandon the planet he loves, and he would much rather fight Frieza. But it's a losing battle. There's no way they could win. Even if they all became great apes, Frieza seems far too powerful for them to take on, not to mention his entire army. They need to think long term, and a short term battle would be stupid. King Vegeta is stuck on inaction right now, and Bardock tells King Vegeta to consider another option. The two begin arguing because neither truly has a clue of what to do. Vegeta reminds Bardock that he's the superior, and he does want what's best for his people. Fighting isn't an option, but nor is leaving the planet. Bardock disagrees. They can't be complacent. And sure, leaving would be tough. It's a lot easier said than done, and it might not sound good on paper. Some of the other soldiers there think they should just fight, like Nappa, one of the other higher-ups. Even if it's a losing battle, it's in their blood. They might not be brutish warriors anymore, but they are still strong warriors. Vegeta isn't too sure of what to do. They could declare war, or they could abandon the planet. Those are really their only two options. One of them ends in certain death, and the other, it might seem a bit cowardly, but it's the smarter option, and it might prevent some deaths and it also might be impossible at the same time. They don't know if they have the infrastructure to evacuate everybody, and besides, Frieza would just hunt them down. Bardock is conflicted too. He isn't really sure of what to do next. Maybe their only way of surviving is retreating, but doing that's a huge issue. 
Besides getting everyone off the planet, first they need to let everybody know about this. Frieza definitely has some sort of spies here. Even if they try to do this covertly, it wouldn't work. There's no way Frieza wouldn't notice them leaving, and before they leave, he would definitely notice the communications. Vegeta would need to publicly declare Frieza as an enemy, and right when he does that, there's a chance Frieza just destroys them on the spot. They're stuck. It seems like there's not any good option here. There is the slim chance that Frieza doesn't do anything, but with each passing day it seems more and more likely. Bardock hopes Vegeta finds a solution before Frieza kills them all. And Vegeta does see the instability on the horizon, but few realize the scale of it. His top ranks do, and sure, a lot of the masses do, but they only have a brief picture of it. Everybody's worried, and King Vegeta really needs a solution. His planet and his people are at stake. His sons must live on too. He thinks about them, Vegeta the Fourth and Tarbal. Their only chance at growing up would be to leave this planet. He can't really see another way. He didn't want to accept reality, but he knows what's going to happen. A few days later, King Vegeta makes a speech for the entire planet. It's off-putting because he starts out by apologizing for not being the best leader. They've never seen this side of him. He tells them he should have stood up to injustice much sooner. As Saiyans, they should be bold. He acknowledges their history as warriors. They stood up against the evil Saiyans before, even with the implications of the battle and all the losses that would come with it, still. They found a way, and it did end up working. He says that they have an enemy, but one that they can't fight, and he makes the announcement that shocks the entire planet. He tells them that effective immediately, every Saiyan must leave planet Vegeta. Frieza, and anyone affiliated with him, they're direct enemies of the Saiyans. He expects chaos, but there's resounding support. They could fight, but he acknowledges the grim reality. They would all lose if they fought. There's nothing brave about stupidity. And he also tells them the facts. They might not survive if they leave. Survival isn't guaranteed, but this at least gives them the chance. Staying there would make those chances zero. But if they leave this planet, they'll make something anew. They'll live prosperous lives. And even though they're spread out, they'll still grow stronger. And then they'll strike together. The Saiyans together are strong. Rather than all of them dying in ignorance, this way they have a chance to evacuate, as well as maybe catching Frieza off guard in the future. They'll be separated by huge distances. Maybe some will be on the same planet. Maybe some won't even be in the same galaxy. Whatever the case may be, inevitably, the Saiyans will reunite one day. And Vegeta hopes he could see the next step in Saiyan civilization. He's not sure if he'll live long. He'll definitely be the biggest target. And, if he doesn't make it, he tells them it's been an honor leading them. Far out in space, there's already a Saiyan that's left. About a day ago, Bardock and his family escaped. On his ship, they're listening into the speech. It's him, Gine, and Raditz. Gine is currently pregnant. Any day now, this family will get another member. And that's part of what motivated Bardock so much, exactly why he wanted to leave right away. But seeing the speech, he can't believe it. He's reinvigorated, and he's happy. It gets his blood pumping. This really is their only chance. It's not a great option, but that speech was a good one. He respects King Vegeta for it, and he hopes as many say and survive as possible. He hopes he gets to see King Vegeta again someday. If not him, at least one of the princes. Naturally, Frieza hears of the speech. Of course, he's listening in. It's being broadcast to every Saiyan, and the Frieza Force as well. Pretty much immediately after the speech, Frieza mobilizes his troops. The reason King Vegeta waited a few days for this is because he wanted Frieza to be away from the planet, and right now he is. There are still some members of the Frieza Force over there, but Frieza heads over as quickly as possible. The forces that are there, they're overwhelmed. Some Saiyans do die before making it off the planet, but a lot of them fight against the Frieza Force soldiers that are there. They have their own ships. They also steal some of the Frieza Force ships. People cram into larger ships together. Some extra Frieza Force soldiers come to the planet and they're killed with their ships stolen. Frieza arrives to the planet a few hours later. He should have seen this coming. He pulls out a scouter and he can detect that there's not many Saiyans left on the planet. And he sees a bunch of them flying throughout space. There's a couple ships still escaping. All of his soldiers fire on the ships, blowing them up, killing Saiyans with their blast, or causing them to die in the vacuum of space. And Frieza's infuriated. He starts shooting death beams left and right, sniping as many Saiyan spaceships as possible racking up hundreds of kills immediately. And as he does that with one finger, in another he charges a ball of energy. He's quaking, that's how angry he is. And without a second thought, he flings this ball of energy at the planet. Even some of his own soldiers are caught in the blast because they didn't escape in time. And just like that, planet Vegeta is destroyed. Many of the Saiyans escaping didn't survive. But others did. Instead of only a handful of survivors, there's a lot of survivors. Some Saiyans did try and fight too, but Many of the ones who fought did die in the process, either when the planet exploded or at the hands of the Frieza Force soldiers. And even with the planet gone, Frieza is still infuriated because first of all, the obvious betrayal, but second of all, he knows he didn't get them all. More of them definitely escaped. And what's worse, he is fearful that the Super Saiyan might rise up one day. Of the Saiyans that survived, King Vegeta is one of them. He wants to regroup with whoever he can as soon as possible, but it'll be tough to do that while being covert. But he still is hopeful. Everything he said in his speech is true, and he thinks the Saiyans will reunite someday. Frieza immediately sends out an order to his entire army. If they find any Saiyan anywhere, kill them immediately. Unfortunately, some of the Saiyans that did escape are caught later on, either because they didn't get far enough from the planet and were caught in space, 
or because they ended up on planets with other Frieza Force soldiers. King Cold hears of the news too. He's not surprised it turned out this way. He knew the Saiyans would rebel eventually, and he knew Frieza was cruel enough to just take them out as is. King Cold contemplated doing it himself, but again, they did make him some money. Not a lot, but enough to justify keeping them alive. It tells Frieza he might have made his hatred too apparent, and this might be a blemish on his record as an emperor. A rebellion doesn't really look good. First of all, it shows that he can turn against people at any time, but it also shows that other parts of his empire can revolt if they want to. It won't be easy, but it's an option. He really needs to step it up, and he promises that he'll hunt down every single Saiyan. Not just that, he'll make an example out of them. He retracts the kill order. Instead of killing Saiyans on sight, they'll be brought directly to Frieza. A few more are captured, and when they are, Frieza broadcasts their execution to every part of his empire, making it brutal as well. This is an example of what happens when you're not loyal. And this is what's going to happen to every single Saiyan out there once he catches them. It's a warning to all the Saiyans and every part of his empire in general. Frieza ruled with an iron fist before, but this is different. I would make a pun about it being a golden fist, but I mean, gold is softer than iron. Anyways, bad time for a joke. All the Saiyans who survive end up on different planets. Bardock and his family end up on a planet called Namek. This planet isn't unknown, but he chose it at random. There's no specific reason he went here. He knows the Namekians are a pacifist group. And when he lands there, a bunch of warrior Namekians show up thinking that they're under attack, but Bardock explains. He doesn't want to fight them, and if they do plan to fight, he'll just leave. He knows he's putting them at risk by coming here, but one of the stronger warrior Namekians steps up and talks to him. He's younger and not as powerful yet, but his name is Nail, one of the warriors with the greatest potential, and he's speaking on behalf of Guru here. Honestly, Namek is worried about Frieza too. They think regardless of what happens, Frieza will probably find this place eventually, and they know the Saiyans are good people now. They do know the history of them as well, but they have no reason to fear Bardock, and they welcome him here. Maybe together, they could all grow stronger to ensure Namek's protection. And Bardock would like that. It is mutually beneficial, after all. A few weeks pass. As Bardock's family gets adjusted to life on Namek, Gine gives birth to a new Saiyan. As far as they know, he might be the first Saiyan born on a new planet after Planet Vegeta was destroyed. A fitting symbol for the new phase of Saiyan life that they're about to enter. The Saiyan born on Namek is named Kakarot. And Bardock hopes that for his whole family, they'll all prosper and reunite with the other Saiyans one day. With that, we leave off here. What did you guys think about this beginning part, and what's going to happen next? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help with the channel, and it shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.